so after having that basic understanding about type 1 and type 2 errors now let's look at this table which explains these two types of error in little bit more detail i'm spending some extra time on these basic topics because i want to make sure that you understand these basic concepts very clearly because doing those statistical tests is easy you can just go follow some steps and do those tests but having this basic understanding is really important so as we earlier said that type 1 error was a false alarm false alarm that things have not changed the machine was still producing bottles with 150 cc and 2 cc as the standard deviation but we raised a false alarm based on small sample we stopped the machine and we readjusted the machine even though there was no need to do that this was type 1 error so here let's look at this table where i have type 1 error and type 2 error type 1 error is also called as alpha and which is shown by this sign this is your sign alpha type 2 error is also called as beta which is shown something like this b with a longer tail let's not talk about these two lines first let's talk about the bottom one first and then in the next slide i will talk about these first two lines type 1 error was a false alarm so in case of fire alarm in the building type 1 error will be to have false alarm so there is no fire but you start hearing fire alarm you need to evacuate the house go out call fire brigade this is called as type 1 error in case of fire in the house so there is no fire but alarm went off this is type 1 error type 2 error on the other hand is that there is a fire but your fire alarm missed to find that this could lead to disaster so type 2 error in this case could be very serious let's take the example of court in the court when innocent is declared as guilty that will be type 1 error the person was innocent but the test or the court hearing decided that this person is guilty so what court did was court made a type 1 error or the alpha error courts do not want to commit this error they don't want to punish an innocent so they keep a very tight control not to commit this type of error on the other hand type 2 error in case of the court will be guilty is declared as innocent because there were not enough proof court might still accept a type 2 error but courts might not want to commit the type 1 error so in that case they will keep a tighter control on the type 1 error and as we go further we will talk that type 1 error is something which you decide first this is the important aspect of hypothesis testing now how do you control type 1 error when you do hypothesis testing this is something which you will be doing you will be fixing a predetermined value 1% 5% or 10% generally this could be even lower or even higher than that 5% is common 1% is when things are serious this could lead to injury or this could lead to accident then you might want to go for 1% level for alpha or the type 1 error if things are not very serious it's okay to make once in a while mistake then you might want to go for 10% alpha value whereas when it comes to type 2 error this is controlled by the sample size you cannot choose both of these error for the specific sample size you pick the alpha value in the beginning and then your beta value or type 2 error is decided by the size so if you want to reduce beta error then go for the bigger size of sample and what will be the effect of type 1 and type 2 error the type 1 error will lead to unnecessary cost due to frequent changes going back to the same example of perfume making if you stop the production line because there was a false alarm you stop the production line after half a day you made some adjustment and then production started you lost half a day of production so type 1 error leads to unnecessary cost because of frequent changes and type 2 error will lead to defects being produced so type 2 error in case of this perfume example will be your bottles which you are filling could be less than 150 
or more than 150 cc on the average. Type 1 error is known as producer's risk and type 2 error is known as the consumer's risk. These terms come from acceptance sampling. What happens in acceptance sampling is, let's say a producer produces something, a 1 million pieces of nuts or bolts or something, then it goes to the buyer or the consumer. What consumer does is, consumer doesn't look at these 1 million bolts which consumer is receiving. Consumer will take some samples based on certain rules and based on that sample, consumer will make a decision to accept the lot, all the 1 million pieces or reject all 1 million pieces based on some sample size. This sample size could be 100 pieces, 200 pieces or something. So what consumer does is checks 100 pieces and based on that makes the judgment about these million pieces which have come. Type 1 error is false alarm. So false alarm means let's say in that particular sample of 100 pieces, this fellow might have got a lot of defective pieces. Just because of sampling, the sample was bad that led to the whole lot getting rejected. So even though sample was good, but just because of sampling, this whole lot got rejected. This is type 1 error. Now type 1 error is the producer's risk because the lot was good, still lot got rejected. So producer of the boards had to lose money. On the other hand, if the lot was bad, there were a lot of defectives in that, but luckily the sample which was picked were all good. So if all were good, then the whole lot was accepted. If the whole lot was accepted, which was bad quality lot, that would lead to the loss for the consumer or the buyer. So this is also called as consumer's risk. So that's where these two terms come from, producer's risk and consumer's risk. Now coming to these two things, significance level and confidence level. This is something which we need to decide beforehand. So whenever you do some test, you need to decide what's your confidence level. Let's say if I want to keep a confidence level of 99%, that means I don't want to take any risk. Or on the other hand, let's say if I go for confidence level of 90%, then I understand that 1 in 10 times I will make a mistake. In case of 99%, this mistake will be 1 in 100 times. What is the confidence level you want? Now, probably you will say, you know what, why should I go for 90%, 99%? Why shouldn't I go for 100% confidence level? To go for 100% confidence level, then you have to come out of sampling. You cannot do any sampling. So in case of that 1 million pieces which come to your door for inspection, you need to check all 1 million pieces and you don't want to do that. If you do that, probably then you will get a confidence level of 100%. So that's the reason in most of the cases, confidence level of 100% is ruled out. In case of perfume making company, you need to check the volume of each and every bottle. Then only you will get 100% confidence level. So most of the time, in reality, you end up with 95% confidence level. Another term is level of significance. Level of significance or the type 1 error is 1 minus the confidence level. 1 minus C is equal to alpha or the type 1 error. So in case of 95% confidence level, the type 1 error or the level of significance will be 5% or 0.05. I will be using this term a lot. Alpha is equal to 0.05. This is what it is. The level of significance or the type 1 error. When the type 1 error is 0.05, that means the test which I am doing right now, if I repeat the same test 20 times, then 1 out of 20 times, I will make a wrong decision. That is something you take for granted. You understand that, that in hypothesis testing, when you take sample and you make judgment about the population, you will make mistake. So when you choose alpha is equal to 0.05, you understand that out of 20 times, you will make one mistake. Another term here is power of test. Power of test is 1 minus beta. 1 minus beta is the power of test. So we generally talk about alpha value. We generally do not talk about beta in most of the hypothesis testing. So as you go further, 
you will see that in most of these hypothesis testing, we will be talking about alpha value, which you decide. Beta is left to the sample size. So if you want to decrease the beta value or the type 2 error, you need to go for bigger sample. So here is that term power of the test. So power of the test is 1 minus beta or 1 minus type 2 error. And type 2 error, if you remember, was that something has gone wrong and we failed to detect that. The house was on fire, but the fire detector or the smoke detector did not sound. That was type 2 error. 1 minus type 2 error will be the power. That means this is the ability to find out that change. If something has changed and you find it out, that is the power of the test. So power is the likelihood of rejecting the null hypothesis when null hypothesis is false. So going back to the case of fire case, the null hypothesis is that there is no fire. The alternate hypothesis was that there is a fire. So when the null hypothesis is false, that means the house is on fire, then the likelihood of rejecting the null hypothesis, null hypothesis was no fire. So rejecting that is the power. That means it is the ability to find out the change when that change happens. That's the power of the test. That's what you see here. Power is the ability of the test to correctly reject the null hypothesis. So this completes our discussion on type 1 and type 2 error. In the process, we also learned about alpha value and the beta value.